Yeah. Did any of you get them? Yeah, I, I got mine. Okay, great. Y'all got those. Um, okay. <clears throat> those I got I, mine, but I don't think the forwarding number is correct. Say that again now? I got mine, but I don't think the forwarding number is correct. Uh, what forwarding number did you put down the us? Because your email is there too. So we just replied back to your email. So check the email and see what you sent. See what you sent over to us. If you need us to um, to adjust it, you know, send something back to us. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So, um, but anyway, let me go there real quick and show you all. I, I got to go to that that email anyway. Let me uh, go to start sharing my screen here. First of all, well, first of all, let me do this. Uh, recording, recording has started. All right. Good evening, everybody. This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS of the Business Learning Center in Assurance USA. And we're here with the members of the National Dispatchers Network. Um, <clears throat> today is Wednesday, Q&A. Every Wednesday from 7 p.m. until we have questions and answers. Um, you all ask questions. I try to provide the answers. So um, we're not going to be very long tonight because I have a lot of work to do still on uh, upgrading the website, getting the new visuals in. I finished up with the toll-free extensions and the domain email addresses. You all should have those. And I am just finishing up with the map. Um, and I've got it kind of color coordinated. And I've just finished up with, just finishing up with that. I gotta put some final 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 touches on it. But I'm gonna show you all here. Um, uh, so I'll share my screen. Uh, you all remember it if you are have your mic open. Um, if you got stuff going on going on in your background, if you can hear it, we can hear it. So um, turn it off or mute your mic. Okay, remember that. If you can hear it, because you guys make it nice. If you can hear it, we can hear it. Okay, it comes through way, way, way loud on these um, broadcasts because those mics are very, very, very sensitive. All right, so just just keep that in mind. Um, even stuff that's way off in the background, <laughs> you know, we can hear it. Um, these mics, will, we'll pick it up. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get over to, start sharing my screen. All right, and let's go ahead and log into this email so I can show you all some of the stuff that we have that's going on. Got some, got some great announcements, um, some great updates uh, for y'all too. Okay. Um, as you all can see here, when we send these bikes out, when we send these bikes out, this is pretty much what it looks like, okay? Um, we send out, you know, your phone number, which is your toll-free number, that's it right there. Your extension, that's it right there, um, you know, and then we send back, you know, you know um, what the name of it is and your phone number um, and um, where it forwards to and of course your email address, okay? That's what you all got back. Some of y'all got a little bit more stuff you know, showing you what your up updated um, passwords was you know, and stuff like that. So you all got those back. Um, other stuff that we are, that I need to go over, over with you all. This is the, um, <clears throat> what we have so far as far as the state, you know, um, the country, as we have divided up with the um, with the Assurance USA branches. Okay, um, these everything that has a red dot in it, that state is taken. The states that are left blank, they're still open. I didn't put green in them yet because I don't want to start putting green in them, and then people start, you know, taking them, and then we start got to put red and green in it. Well, I got to read the whole thing. I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. But I just put the red. I mean, the ones that's taken, and these have been confirmed. I've called the people back and confirmed these states have been taken. And then I um, left, left the other states open so you all would know what is still available. All right. I'm going to be sending this out to everyone tonight. I'm going to be putting together a, a mass email, and everybody is going to get it. Also, it's going to have down here. Where it's mapped out that says red dots are taking states. 
unmarked are still available. Plates are signed and locked up. These are the ones right here. These are the people who have them. <laughs> these are the ones that are open. Um, these are the ones that are looking for partners. Uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Tangina, I know you say you got a partner for the state of Alabama, right? Or you got Alabama, right? Yeah, I want to do Alabama. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll make that update and I'll make sure I check that email and make that update uh, with that on. And there you are right there. I'll go ahead and um, get to that and look at some of these other ones too before I get the sack tonight. All right. So um, that's the deal with the states. Now, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 um, outlook. Now, as you all know, with our new platform, Assurance you will say we are not depending on low boards. Okay. Are we gonna use low boards? Yeah. Um, but are we gonna solely depend on low boards? No, by by no means are we depending on low boards. Um, we are actively, well, I am actively now, and I hope to get you all up and started doing this too. Um, I'm, I am actively reaching out to brokers and shippers. And I had an interesting conversation with a broker today. And they love the Assurance USA business model. They love the fact that we allow them to make money and they help us to make money too. They absolutely love it. And they are full screen, screen they are full screen on board. Okay. Um, the company that I, um, that I was able to land a relationship with, with today was um, Frog Global Logistics. I think this is it right here. Um, in your, uh, yep. Frog Global Logistics. This is the company that we was able to um, develop a relationship with, and they're going to start sending us all their loads, and they're going to have them arranged to fit within the parameters that we are asking for for our flatbed, our drive-in, and our refrigerator. So, um, we'll get loads from them as well as we've also got some stuff worked out with, let's see, some other places here. I'm going to put these all in different categories. Um, oh, that's from a sin. Hold on, here's going to jump mail. Maybe some of it. Bam. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba YouTube, VA, Smart Miz, in my annual. Yeah, we'll carry this up. Yeah. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. This this frog logistics right there. That's their information and this stuff that they sent over to us. And we've got about three more that we have um made connections with. One, no. Ba, ba, ba. But I'm gonna fix them all in our CNTMS. So we'll be able to pull them up. Um, this is Sam Jones load sheet. Yep, best best bay um, logistics. We formed a relationship with them, and we've also formed a relationship with. What is it? Hold on. And we've got several more who are supposed to be sending us stuff. They just haven't sent it over yet. Um. So we've been very uh, I, We can hear your conversation. Now, we, just remember that now. If you have a conversation, we can hear them. So mute your mic. Uh, hold on a second. This is Calvin with RBBS. Um, we're right in the middle of our Wednesday night Q and A training. Um, so I can be with you. Nah, I can give you a call uh, when it's over with, or you can give me a call back at about, oh, 9 o'clock. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Sorry right, about that. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'll find it here in a minute. But we've got um, at least two more who, who, who are going to be sending us loads um, that fit within our um, guidelines and within the parameters that we need them to be in. So that's coming along pretty well, okay? And 
And I want to get you all up to speed on that too and start doing this exact same thing. Because ideally what we want to have, we want to have a whole bunch of loads that's coming to us on a daily basis that already fit the pricing parameters that we need. Dry vans, above $2 per mile. Fat beds, above $2.50 per mile. Reefers, above $3 per mile. If we can consistently get those in from various shippers and mm -hmm. various brokers. Yes, let me see. I'll meet to them because I'm trying to meet them here. They might hear everything we are doing here. Thanks. Are you finished? Well, we'll wait till you finish. I'm sorry, Colin. I turned my phone though. Yeah, yeah. Those mics, when you all talk on mic, it it just overshadows everything that we're talking about. Okay? Yeah, so y'all gotta keep that in mind. Um, okay. Try to mute your mics before you you know if you're having conversations and stuff. Just mute your mics. All right. Where was I? <laughs> Lost track. Um, we want to get you all on the same page and in um in contacting brokers and shippers and basically you're you're not even negotiating with them you're basically calling them up and letting them know that you are allowing them to make more money literally that's what you're doing but at the same time you're also securing freight that's going to be paying well above the subpar rate of what our carriers need and want Okay, there's no, there is no better scenario, no better scenario, okay. So, and for everyone that I've been in contact with, and and I've approached them with um, that strategy, they absolutely love it. They agree that that's it, this is the way that the industry should be ran. This is the way. This is the direction that the industry should be going in. They also agree that there's too many, um, you know, carriers and and dispatchers and people out there who are who are only concerned, their only concern is trying to make as much money as they can, and that is driving the the industry down. Okay. Pretty soon you're not gonna be able to, you know, get any good freight because everybody's just trying to make all the money. You can't, I mean, you just can't have it that way. You gotta have a, a nice balance where everybody who's involved with the relationship is able to um see some profitability cannot drive the profits up for one side and the other side is not making any money pretty soon you're not going to have any supplies because your supplier is not able to make money you can't make money without your supplier so that means your supplier has to make money too and the suppliers are the brokers and the shipper plain and simple so they got to make money on the operators got to make money and if we can make it where they all make money then we will make money that's that's basically how it works out. All right, so um, we're getting the shippers and the brokers. They're they're loving our new approach. They're loving that strategy. So it should not be difficult at all for the branches to be profitable at all. If we do what we're supposed to be doing, getting those shippers in, getting those brokers in, getting those loads over that fit within our parameters, and keeping our on our operators <clears throat> um, for the week above those subpar rates with the flat rate dispatching. I mean, it's all great from there. All right. So with that being said, let's go into our Q&A. Tonight is Q&A. So let's have some questions and I'll see if I can provide some answers. And the floor is now open. Who's going to be first? All right, everybody, this is Q&A. This is not training. This is Q&A. So if you have questions, let's have them. The, uh, the, the, not the carrier profile sheet, under this assurance uh, USA uh, model, we would have to change up our um, uh, dispatch agreement. Yeah. We're going to provide you all, there's going to be a dispatch agreement. There's going to be a dispatch 
agreement provided for you all. It is going to be on another page on the website. I'm working on that right now. That page is gonna is basically gonna be a sign up page for the carriers. They'll be able to go onto that page. They'll be able to look over the dispatch agreement, all the terms, you know, old agreement. They'll be able to to pull it up, e sign it, or docu sign it right there on the site, and then they'll be able to submit it and send it right over to the branch, <laughs> whatever branch that they're signing up on. Okay, so we're gonna have that there, and then all you all have to do is when you're on the phone with someone, you call up, they got questions about this thing, you explain it to them. It's okay, great. Let's get signed up. All you're gonna give it, all you gotta have to do is just pull up <laughs> that dispatch agreement and get their email address, forward it over to them. They sign it, send it right. Or you will simply be able to direct them to the page on the website. Just go to this page right here and pull it up. You pull it up while you're on there with them. They pull it up, you kind of walk them through it. They do it right there online and they submit it right back to you. Okay. Yeah, and one more question. Yeah. Once, uh, say if uh, the carriers ran a load and then they sent everything back to us, uh, we would forward that over to, straight to one of the- uh, In fact, uh, I'm sorry? We forward it to the factoring company or to the broker? What, what are you to the about? factoring. It would be to the factoring company under the USA, wouldn't it? Exactly. We're gonna forward it right to the factory company. The factory company is gonna factor it and they're going to take care of, uh, you know, uh, paying everybody. Okay, gotcha. Now, now you will send a copy of the BOL back over to the broker because you know they gotta have a copy of the BOL, okay? But all the brokers that are gonna be working with us, they're gonna be aware um, when they sign up with us the slows that we are doing all the fact and all the factoring is being done through the two factory companies that we have. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Um, um I have a question. Yes, um will you be able to join into Assurance USA after the 29th? Uh will there still be any opportunities to yeah uh, I mean as long as we have states that are available, I mean, you'll be able to, uh, you know, enact a trademark uh, fee agreement, um, trademark license agreement. You'll also be able to come in and work as member specialists. You know, so, I mean, we want to have as many member specialists as we can. Because the more member specialists we have, the more branding we're putting out, the more on operators we're able to handle. Um, and thus, we are going to be starting the hiring campaign um, starting this weekend with Indeed. Um, we're doing a national um, hiring campaign where we're going to be hiring salary um, dispatch agents <laughs> um, to actually take care of the, the dispatching, the core dispatching. Um, what you all would do as members, especially as you all's job is basically to go out and bring in new signups, new owner operators, and you'll probably dispatch them that first week or first two weeks. But after that, you'll be turning them over to the um, the dispatch agents, um, um, the salary employee staff. That's what we're going to be hiring for um, starting out this weekend. We're going to start a massive um, national campaign with Indeed um, hiring um, dispatch agents. And we're looking at paying them somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, into the fourteen dollars per hour. Well, that's how it's going to work out. Half of it's gonna, half of the pay is going to be in um, performance, like like commission per load they dispatch. Other half is going to be in salary um, by the hour, and their and their hours of operation are going to be from six a.m. in the morning until about twelve noon. We really don't need anybody to do dispatch after 12 noon. Um, you know, just a good thing that happened after that point, the member specialists, you all can handle that. But the 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 big part of the dispatching is done from 6 a.m. in the morning until about 12 noon. <laughs> Most loads are already been, you know, they matched up, they've been sent out, 
you know, sometimes all that type of stuff is pretty much done. All that's left after that, really, anything that's left to be picked up after 12 noon is really um, dedicated runs, which the owner operators will have, already know what the dedicated runs are once you, once you set them on the dedicated. <laughs> They're picking up a short run load that morning. They're dropping it. Have another mid morning load that they're picking up you know, around about 10 30, 11 o'clock. They run it, they drop it, they pick up their last load somewhere around about ooh, one o'clock, two o'clock. They run it and drop it. Okay, these are all you know, short run loads. They're interconnected. You turn them into um, dedicators where they're running the same loads Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, home every night, off every weekend, and just run the same loads. So those don't need um, any real micromanagement dispatch. You know, once you get them set, they're set. And you don't have to worry about collecting, you know, the money from the Moses Ram Club if it's what? A flat fee. Right? Right. 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 So, so you all see how this becomes so much simpler. It becomes very simplistic. Um, <laughs> once you get everything in place, this is this is this is about as simple as we can make it when it comes to dispatch. Okay. One more question. Yes, yes. I um was throwing the scenario out to a couple of drivers about trying to run short runs in like a tri-state or something like that. But a few of them threw the question back. It sounds good, but it depends on how you can get in there and get the load dropped off and how quickly you can come out of there. That's true. That's why when you're doing your, that's why when you're doing your uh, load management, you have, to, you, you have to allot for that time. Now, that only becomes a problem maybe about the first two or three times you run that load. Right? Anybody that's ever done any type of dedicated runs. You only have that problem probably within the first two or three times you run that load. After that, you pretty much got to figure it out. You know that you need to get to this shipper a little bit earlier because they normally have problems with this. You know that this shipper normally gets you in and out so you can show up you know, right on time and just back right in and get loaded up. There are some things that you can do as an owner-operator and cut down on that. But if you just ignore the patterns and just, oh, I'm just going to have all of this show up, you know, when I want to, and this and that. then you're going to always have problems with it. And that's some of the stuff that we're going to be training you all on, showing you how, how to recognize patterns and how to smooth that out with the receivers and the pickup. Okay? And you're going to be able to smooth that out. On top of that, <laughs> on top of that, we're going to work out some great um, detention pay for those types of things, too. Now, if you're doing dedicated, if you're doing short-run dedicated, remember, you're not doing long haul. These, these are not long-haul dedicated. These are short-run dedicated. Some of these um, dedicated runs, as you are, as we have shown you all, some of them are, you know, 60 miles, 38 miles, 100 miles, okay? Even if you had a, a hour or two hours on your way to load, from at 6 a.m., you get there, and they don't get you loaded till 8. If you're only going 38 miles or 60 miles or 70 miles, there ain't no sweat. But you're going to run it, right? It's 8 o'clock. You got there at 6. Took them two hours to load you. You leave it out about 8.15, 8.30. If you're going 60 miles, it takes you what? Roughly an hour and a half, two hours to get there, right? So from 8.30 up until about what time? 9.30, 10.30, you're there. Right? If it takes them two hours to unload you, right? 10 30 to what? 12 30. You pick up, you, you, you know, you, you, now you unload it. You shoot right over to the next spot, which is usually going to be right there or right close by. You grab that. If it takes you an hour to load that, you're still leaving out there about what? Two o'clock. Right? Right. And you're making your third, and you go to wherever you're going. So, you know, doesn't think you can only get there. Now, here's the deal. When, when we first set you on that, remember, how do we how do we set up those dedicators like that? Right? Remember how we set those up? So y'all here. Remember how we set those up? 
Uh, when you go and you find those lows, and and a lot of them are not, are gonna come from the brokers that we have a relationship with. But I'm gonna show y'all how to do this from the ones just just from the low. Board, okay, even if you just manufacturing them from the low board themselves. The first time you run that load, that's going to give you a true indication of what the time frame is going to be between them. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. All right. So, if you're finding them that short run load, right, and you know that they got there and it took them X amount of time, you know, to get, you know, loaded or whatever the case may be, I'm looking out of that. X amount of time it took them um, to get loaded. You make note of that, right? And and you're gonna know what time he gets loaded, what time he's even out. Oh, you know, you're gonna be in touch with him, and they're gonna tell you, oh, I, or, or, or I didn't get out until what's called time, or I got out, you know, this time or that time. Now, here's another thing you gotta look out for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, drivers will lie to you. <laughs> They will. Uh, they get lazy like everybody else. You know, they want to make stops here, make stops there. They, they will lie to you. All right? So sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes when they're telling you about some of these delays, it, that just ain't so. Okay? I I know because I used to be an on operator. All right? And so if you want to get in and out, most of the time you can get in and out. Now, I'm not saying that Shippers don't have delays, and they some of them aren't you know as prompt, and they are lazy. Some of them are, them are lazy. That happens from time to time, but it's not a mass thing like people like to make it out to be. Okay, sometimes you know the driver gets there late, so they gotta put him at the end of the line again. You know, I mean that happens. That happens a lot too. Okay, they don't want to admit that. Nobody wants to be wrong. How many people do you know that wants to admit that they were wrong? Right, and not many. So sometimes, you know, they get there outside of the schedule, and then the shipper has to make allowances to try and fit them back in somewhere. Okay, so that has something to do with it too. Now, traffic that has something to do with it also too. So you know, there are things they can account for that, but for the most part, things are not things are not are not going to get held up like that, okay, especially when you're committing these sub-dedicated runs. Because when you have short runs like that, I mean, there's not much that can go wrong with short runs. You know, when you have those long-haul runs, you got to make those long hauls, you got to try and time it, you know, when you're, on, when you're running a day and a half, just make the run, that becomes difficult. But when you're running a run that takes an hour, hour and a half, two hours, that's not that difficult to keep a time I'm scared you on, on something like that. Would y'all agree to that? Yeah, just gotta okay. it. Yeah, I mean, so you gotta look at what type of you gotta look at what you're doing, and you know, and look at the 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 scenario that is involved. So if we're looking at like I saw, saw a bunch of short runs here, uh, these are some high runs right here. Let me find some short. What do, what do, what do, what? Alabama is lit up, ain't it? We want some short, 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 short runs. Short, 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 short runs. A lot of um, I let it good, good long runs. That's good. That one being too, not bad. Hey AJ, dog feeling lonely. Come over here just to mess with me. I'm working right now, buddy. Can't play with you right now. AJ, I cannot play with you right now. <laughs> Y'all see you. Yeah. 
<laughs> CJ, Can you on you? camera? Huh? On camera? I can't play with you right now. He's he desperately trying to get my attention. Uh, all right. Trying to find some short runs here. We got a lot of decent mile <laughs> runs that's paying good money, so that's good. Rates are, are looking pretty good right now. Um, a lot of these highlighted stuff. All right. Oh, 431 miles. Got a lot of multiple runs here. So Y'all seeing that? Yeah, I've been on that lately. That's a multiple. You got a lot of multiple runs. That's good. That's real good. And they seem to be all above 400 miles, too, so that's real good. Which means there's some decent money involved. I'm going to get down to the lower amount of waters. I can imagine going, and we've been going for a while, and we haven't found anything that's under 300 miles yet. Alabama is, is kind of bumping pretty good with the, uh, with the decent mile freight. All right, 149 miles, picking up in uh, one on Netta, Alabama going to Atlanta. Yeah, 800 bucks, five dollars and 37 cents. So if you find that short run right there, that's, that's pretty decent short run. Man, 800 bucks, it's gonna take you about two and a half hours to three hours to run that, right? Right? Right. All right, so let's go ahead and look that one up and let's do a reverse search on that. Do a reverse search. Gonna give us the same, you know, trailer. Going back the other way, 25 miles. Let's not do that, let's do 50 miles and we'll get anything on, on 50 miles. On 50 miles, nothing. Let's see if we get anything on 100 miles. 100 miles, probably nothing either. All right, well, let's do this. Let's go back to 50 miles on that, and let's do 50 miles on that. That's what we get. Now we got something. All right. So we got we got this one, which is 19 miles deadhead from where you're dropping off at, right? So you're only going 19 miles to go get this load in Norcross. And then you're going to run it back to um, Gaston, Alabama, which is not that far from where you – came from. It's still within 50 miles, right? And that's paying 400 bucks. So now you just made what, a total of what? 1200 What, 900 bucks? No, no, more 12. than that. You made, yeah, 12, 12. You made 1200 bucks already on two loads, and it's taking you uh, two hours and a half, two hours and a half, three hours, so six hours, and then you let's not count for Hour and a half or two hours in between your drops and your pickups, which means you're gonna do what when you do that? You're gonna go into what sleeper, right? That's what a good driver will do, right? Go into sleeper, got to wouldn't be loaded, it wouldn't be unloaded, right? Right. So they can get those hours back, right? It doesn't it doesn't go against their clock like that? All right. And plus now with the new rule changes that's coming up. You can get even even more time back. Spend more time, you know, off uh, what they call um, off duty hours while you're out and about, right? Everybody know about that? The the new rule changes that's taking effect, I think, in that's coming up. Is it June? Is it August? I think it's August. The new changes, but but it allows you to. Uh, Conserve more time. All right. <clears throat> so you can definitely run both those. Okay. And you've already made 1200 bucks. You actually should have time <coughs> to, run, to run one more short run load. So what you do is you take that one and you do another reverse search. 
and see where you can go with that. And you got some stuff right here. Bam, look, look at that. That's 36 miles away. And it's going 149 miles. You could probably work that one in. That's another 800 bucks. That's what? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 2,000. Two grand in one day. Now, if you can call those brokers back and say, hey, you know, my guy can be there pick that load up at the same time, you know, every day. Okay. Call this name. You know, I got to pick that load up by mid morning at the same time every day. Oh, he can run that load every day? Yep. Now, in order to make this happen, can you give me a little bit more, can you give me a little bit more of a window on his pickup time? If he can do it every day, I can get you a little bit more of a window. You see how the conversation is, how you craft the conversation to be able to get what you need and get what you want? Right? Because you're giving them something that you're giving them something very valuable. You're taking something off their books that they normally would have to find a load for all the time. You're turning it into a basically into a dedicated run that they ain't gotta worry about it no more. And you do the same thing with the third one, and you just put somebody on a, you know, a nice little dedicated, and that and you and those those are running every day like that. You put them on a nice little dedicated, five days a week, three loads a day, on back in the you no know, close back in the same spot every night. Cause you ain't put all together, uh, thirty six to fifty miles away on on any one of your drops, right? Right. Right. You easily get back home. You know, shoot, I drive out of service for that long, thirty six miles. <laughs> I have done it. Ain't gonna lie. Take those back roads. No, I'm going home back home, man. <laughs> you know, I'm not going down IT and I'm thinking 90. No, <laughs> I'm on the back way. Just 36 miles. Bam, you're there. All right? So $2,000 a day, five days a week, home every night, off every weekend. I like gravy to you. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, gravy, man. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not that hard to do when you, you when you're looking for it. You know how things are hard to find, uh, or, or you know, you, you, know, you know how when you're always just looking for something, you can never find it. <laughs> but deal, you ain't looking yeah. for it, staring around right your face all the time. This is like the reverse of that. Okay, if you're not looking for the dedicated runs, you ain't gonna find them, right? Because you 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 really got to look for them. You really, really got to know how. Uh, you got to have a plan to find these short run loads. And then you got to make an effort to connect them and turn them into dedicators. That's what a good dispatcher does. That's what a, it, Now, that little bit extra time you took to, to, to do that, did that not, if you're able to make that happen, would that not make your job a whole lot easier with that on operator? Yes. yes. Yeah, you ain't got to look for loads for him no more. <laughs> he got his loads. And you're going to continue to get your $250 a week from that on operator. $1,000 a month, flat fee dispatch. You ain't got to worry about sending him no invoices. You ain't got to worry about making up no invoices. Y'all see how, see how simplified you're making things? You don't have to send him no invoice. You don't have to make up no invoice. You ain't got to put together no invoices. None of that. Once you get him on a dedicated run, you ain't got to find him loads no more. He, he got his loads. You just need to just check on him every now and then with the brokers to make sure those loads are still running. Right? Right. right. That's an easy way to make money. Right? Right. Only under the Assurance USA Compensation Plan. <laughs> just, you don't get no easier than that. All we're doing is we're simplifying the whole process. I mean, when I say so, and we are simplifying by by having relationship with with um, brokers and shippers who are who are going to be sending us loads that already fit within the criteria we need them to. That already fit within the pricing criteria 
to keep our owner operators above subpar for the week. That's a big part of it. Okay. So one of the biggest things that we're going to be doing is we're going to constantly be, you know, reaching out to brokers and reaching out to shippers <laughs> and educating them on our way of doing things and, and basically showing them how working in our way helps them to make more money, which helps us to make more money for our own operators. Because it's one thing to have an own operator. This week, you find them a lot of high paying freight they're way up here, but then for the next two weeks, they're way down here. Then you find them, they're here. Then the next week, they're, they're there. Then they're down there. Then the next week, they're way up here. You can't, you can't run no business like that. Right? I mean, you, I mean, you can't run a business like that. No consistency. You don't know when your low end is going to be, when your high end is going to be. One week, you're making money. Next week, you're losing money. Wouldn't it be better to form relationships to where the brokers are making decent money, the shipper is making decent money, and the owner operators are all making decent money. They're all within that medium range. And it just stays right there. Wouldn't that be better? It would. And that's that, that, that's that's exactly what we're doing. That's all we're doing. We've just been very smart about how we got it set up with our trademarks and our patents and things of that nature. Since we are the first to make it happen and put it in a format, in an actual working business model, you know, that's what it means to be first to do something, you know. Fortune goes to the boat. Or fortune favors the boat. You're bold enough to step out there and, you know, and make these things happen, then you're going to reap the fortunes from it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to yeah, we're going to reap the fortune. But we have a very, very, very solid plan. And it's a very attractive one for everybody involved. Not just the owner operator, not just the broker, not just the shipper. Everybody involved loves this business model. Okay. Do you know when we will probably have access to the merchant account so that we could send the fees? Um, as I said last night, we're going to start training on that on Monday. That's the Monday day we're going to have it in. Yeah, Monday, um, it's our Assurance USA training. So Monday night we're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna um, 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 do training on that and get everybody um, so everybody can log on and create their username and passwords. But that's the same date that we have to have everything in by next Monday. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, but we don't launch until what Fourth of July. No, I'm just following up with what you said. You have to have it in by the 29th. Yeah. I mean, that's just. No, that's just you gotta have your money here by the end. Okay. That that don't mean that I can't I'm probably gonna call y'all on Saturday mm -hmm. and process it on Saturday. Oh, I'm I mean, thinking I, that yeah, no, I'm thinking the that account, have to pay yeah, no, that. no, the rest of the account is already set up. We, I just gotta start training you all on it. And get yeah, you I mean, your logins and your access code. You know, that's all we gotta do. But the merchant account, we did that. When did we do that, you all? When the merchant account I was on here, it was a little was, while ago. But yeah, that was like that was like two, three weeks. That was like two weeks ago, right? Yeah, but I'm thinking we had to pay the fee through that, so I didn't know you were calling no. directly. Oh, no, that money's already coming out of my bank account. <laughs> they had to do a job. That's money that I pay him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just some of the responsibility, you know, of, of being CEO. You know, you set this stuff up, you can't, you can't say, well, I'm going to pay y'all. <laughs> you get get of <laughs> they want to be able to go to your bank account and start taking money. <laughs> They're already doing that. <laughs> I hear a lot of echo and feedback. Yeah, I, yeah, because we got some people got their mics open, and you got a lot of, uh, you know, when people are talking. That that's what I mean by y'all need to mute your mics if you're not talking, because 
stuff in the back. Now, these mics pick up everything. They really do. If you're moving around, we hear you brushing up against your mics and moving your chairs. People in the background talking. We hear all the conversations. Uh, you're clearing your throat, sneezing, or whatever. We're hearing it all. Okay? Um, but that's you know, that's just the hazards of having, you know, this type of platform where we have open mics and it's all interactive. Okay. Um, but yeah, but the merchant account is already it's it's set up. It's good to go. Uh, we did that a, um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I just got to start getting you all. I got to get you all logged in and on it so you all can go use it. Um, but I'll be, be contacting you all on Saturday and we'll be processing those um, into the merchant account. And I'll be transferring that over to the um, Wells Fargo um, escrow account. And then from there, a good portion of that is going to be transferred over to the Robinhood holding account because Robinhood actually pays us higher dividends on the money that they're holding versus it being held in the bank. And with the Robinhood debit card, we can still do what we need to do as far as our branding, just like we would do if we were doing a rational bank. The only difference is the money that we're holding there makes us more money. Okay? Um, and this, and that's another thing that I want you all to take notice of. Um, you know, following the example of the things that we do that makes this company more money. Okay, I mean, same things that we do, you can do it too. You know, if you got a bank account, you got a Robinhood account. If your bank account is only paying you what one and a quarter percent, or your savings account is only paying you what? What does the average savings account pay? Is it every quarter? Or or most of them pay you on a yearly, right? The interest is, is yearly, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. an annual it's interest year. rate. Annual. Yeah. Yeah, it might be what? Two point two and a quarter percent, two percent, one point seven five percent, or something like that, right? Or I was a patient monthly. Three percent. Uh, it's not it's not that high, Calvin. Try what, Robert that? point no, no. regular savings account. Oh yeah, point, yeah, point yeah, it's, yeah, it's low. Five percent, something like that. <laughs> yeah, your regular savings account is low. <laughs> you ain't making no money on it, trust me. But Robinhood right pays you three percent. Can't beat that. Nowhere that I've seen on just having your money just sit there in your, you know, I'm in the account. So the money you're not in, so you can transfer money and you can invest money. <laughs> but you can also transfer the bulk of your money and just let it sit there and not invest. So the money that's not being invested is still drawing an interest of 3% a month. Where else can you get that? Yeah. The only thing that's better... <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, look, 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 look. Look, now I've said this a thousand times. Mute your mic. I just said these mics pick up everything. Did I not? <laughs> did I not just say that? You surely did, Calvin. Now, I'm not, I don't know how many times I got to tell y'all this. These mics pick up everything. Now, chances are this broadcast will not be able to go on YouTube. If it does, I can't monetize it. Okay? Now, I've asked you all very nicely to respect the process. You're going to do stuff like that? Mute your mic. I'm not going to say who it is because you know who it is. You know what you just did. And it came through loud and clear. Like a doggone waterfall. <laughs> Okay. I mean, if you want people to view you as being professional, you got to start behaving as professional. You really do. And you really do. Uh, it's not like I hadn't told you all this. It's not like I hadn't, you know, I, I literally just, just, just went over it. It just went over it. 
and you get up on an open mic, and then you do what you do. All right? So, obviously, this one would not be, this broadcast you all would not find on YouTube. A new YouTube is never going to let me monetize it. It's, 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 it's just not going to happen. So, get a pop still on YouTube for, for about a week, and then when they do their review process, they will be the whole show. Okay? So, as I've told y'all time and time again, respect the process. Okay? At least have that much respect for what we are trying to accomplish. Don't, don't self-sabotage it. Let's not, let's not start that. I mean, we're trying to build a billion dollar company here. Literally, we, we are working on building a billion dollar. The, the first year we will put more than $40 billion in circulation. Now, that warrants you, you ha having a little bit of professionalism. All right, let's keep that in mind. All right? All right. Um, I, I, I can't even remember where I was at. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I can't even remember where I was at. Um, but yeah. I don't think nobody remembers. Yeah. <laughs> um, it look. was a 3% with the bank. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, savings account don't give you that kind of on return on your money. Um, we want you all to follow our example on, especially on how to grow your money, not just how to make money, but the only thing that's better than making money is to grow the money you've already made. Okay, and um, that's 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 what we're um, that's what that's what we practice. That's what I've been practicing for quite some time, and. Um, if, if if you do that enough and you get pretty good at it, you don't have to worry about where money's coming from because the money you've already made has increased itself way more than you would ever thought it would have. All right, all right. Uh, next question. Hey, Calvin. This this is Cedric. Hey. Um, I have a question for you um, pertaining to the leads. Are the leads for the um, um, are the owners allowed to contact the leads or just the member specialists? Oh, you can contact me, sir. It's, okay. It, it's okay. your branch. <laughs> right? Okay. Now. Yes, that's correct. Now, I so, don't want the owners, mm -hmm. now, now, I don't want the owners taking up all the leads. Okay? Because remember, your member specialists, they got to make money, too. Yes, you got to have Absolutely. some type of, you know, uh, standards to, um, and stuff that's put in place so that your member specialists can make money too. Okay, um, you as branch okay. owners, yeah. you gotta have enough responsibility. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, you know, <laughs> by the time Mister Barber gets through with you all and Mister, um, <laughs> um, 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 Yomas. And that's what y'all y'all gonna be working very closely with those two. Mr. Barber is is gonna be our branch liaison, and Mr. Yeomans, he's our um, operations officer. Um, um, <laughs> you know, you all gonna have enough to do when it comes to you know branding, coming up with procedures within your branch. You know, you know, developing you know your own internal ad budgets. Um, you know, working with companies like, you know, uh, different marketing companies that we're going to be using, you know, all that stuff, all that stuff. You all going to get access to the app that we use to create professional type videos and branding and things like that. All that stuff. Um, there was, there was one app that I'm using. I think I got it in here. I think I did something with it, but one of but something that me and my wife did. It was just something for like the little mask things, but we promote this this company that sells like the protective gear, masks and stuff like that. Um, ah, where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. It's a, it, it's almost like a professional um, video. Albums. Let me go to videos. 
probably pull it up and to give y'all a kind of a, I think this is it right here. Is that it? That might not be. Might have been it. I, I don't think that's it. Let me let me click on it. I don't think that's it. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Um, there's something that I did that and it, and it's, it's really nice. Um, I'm not sure where I put it at though. Y'all, yeah, I do a lot of videos. <laughs> I can't, I can't keep my behind off this thing. That no, that's that's too long. That's not it. Way too long. I think this is it right here. Nope, that's only four seconds. That's not it. That's just my wife. That was part of it, but that's not it. Where is that video? Where is that production that we did? Oh, there's right there. Public family production. All right. See, is y'all see it right here? It's made up kind of like a movie, right? This is an app that I'm going to be giving you all um, access to. And you're going to be able to create like movie production type um, little branding segments. I think y'all can hear it. Do I got my computer mic on? Can y'all hear that? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. Yes. the truck stop the shoot some scenes we shoot stuff and then we kind of piece it all together and really do it right and y'all see how it can become a very 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 detailed like big production almost i'm kind of like yeah okay now this is just something that we just did we were just sitting around yeah let's do the trip on the phone you know took us five minutes five minutes Okay, so what happens when we start actually you know, getting footage, you know, from the truck stop, getting footage from our actual website, getting footage from, you know, uh, conversations that we're having, having, you know, live conversations and this, that, and, and, and nice, nice detailed imagery. We'll be able to put together a, 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 a whole string of, you know, commercial style ready, you know, um, commercials, good productions. You know, it comes across great. You can you can turn around and put it on YouTube. You can play it in a commercial on television, just whatever. Okay, but um, that's what we're talking about there. Um, and and it's from um, it's it's called iMovie. You all can look it up. You know, if you have if you have the iPhone or something like that. It's called iMovie. Um, and it allows you to put in all your, you know, your, uh, like I said, me, me, you know, the editor, me, <laughs> production out of me, director of photography, me, casting by me, music by iMovie, costume designer, me, executive producer, me, written by me, directed by me, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, 
uh, a Butler family. So I move in. Butler Family Films presents a Butler Family Films production in association with I Movie and Me Films. <laughs> you know, but just imagine what we can do when we sit down and we collaborate on stuff like this with the with with with, with the branches. And you all have footage, you know, that you're shooting from your areas, from truck stops or whatever you're doing. You go out, you shoot some footage, <laughs> you click some some imagery, and you want to tell a story about what we do and how it's going to benefit on our operators. Tell some pretty compelling short stories, right? I don't know if y'all. I'm old enough to remember. We had to have about twenty thousand dollars just to do something like this. Technology has really, you know, this is what I love about opportunities. Now, you don't you don't need a whole lot to create, you know, great opportunities. You really don't. Technology has done away with that. There used to be a time when you would need a minimum of fifty thousand dollars just to even think about trying to start a business. Now with technology and the, and, and the things that we have available um, to us, we can do things that, that were never thought possible before and generate <laughs> millions of dollars. In, in our case, put billions of dollars in circulation. But these are all some of the things that you all are going to be having access to um, when we, get, when we um, get the back office up and going the way we really want it. Okay? All right. Let's get out of that. Uh, uh, um, does anybody else have a next question? I know y'all got questions now. Y'all, my phone will be ringing all day. <laughs> you know, Q and A, no one's got it in We still traumatized. No, um, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, I feel um, you on that. But, but I, I, hey, these lows are looking great, though, y'all. I mean, this board is lit up. I was wondering, um, far as the um, Robin Hood go, can we have like a separate group for like investing in within the platform? I've been thinking about that. Um, uh, I have been um, contemplating, um, um, ramping up, and well, reacting without reactivating, um, revisiting my diaries of a homeless um, entrepreneur thing. Um, it's it's out there, but I don't really, you know, promote it or do anything on it like I did before. I mean. Everything that I do now is just, you know, just, I've, I've never stopped recording. So I can, I can literally take everything that I've done with um, the RBS Logistics Learning Centers, all the recordings from that. I can take all the recordings from um, the Assurance USA, the P4L, Parts for Less, all that stuff. Even my, um, I have a real estate. Um, I have a... <laughs> I have a, I have a, um, I have a, a platform that teaches people how to to um to flip homes. It's called JCB Acquisitions. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at that, that yesterday. Actually. Okay, because <laughs> <laughs> I do um property as well. Yeah, um, I got a business. Yeah, it's called JCB Acquisitions. JCB a. I have a, I have a, I can't remember the actual website. <laughs> it's on Facebook and it's on YouTube too. Um, ACB. ACB acquisition. All right. Um, that's a Facebook page website. Yeah, I mean, I can pull up on. Um, 
where I, where you know, but this is one of the this is one of the first things that made me you know a real big money when I was homeless. Because I actually started this uh, when I was homeless too. This was the second um, business I started from the homeless shelter. Um, the first was um, CSC. Um, 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 CSC. Um, Consumer Services of North America. That's what it was. Um, but this company right here was the second thing I did um, with the um, when I was at the homeless shelter. I did a flip, my first flip. I did it. I think I had been at the homeless shelter. This is it right here. This is the YouTube um, video of it. This is the first flip I did. I, um, I got this... I picked this home up under a um, an assignment of contract. Is what I picked it up on. I, I picked right, up an assignment of contract. This was in 2010. California Street, Tallahassee, <laughs> Florida. Um, the property, house. I believe, was a three-bedroom, one bath, and single-family residence. I used to give instructions. Um, the I give instructions. I'm going to do home. The sale price is seventeen thousand nine hundred dollars. How to get properties on the contract with no pay down? The estimated value of this property is seventy nine thousand um, dollars. Get access to the property with the um, property. According to their property appraisers website, to use uh, for the Leon County Public Notice site, um, it has a tax assessed value of approximately fifty seven thousand six hundred or fifty seven thousand eight hundred dollars. I'm not quite certain yet. Um, property it seems to be in a, decent condition. Looks like it may like need about so I can literally 10, take all of the things that maybe I've been fifteen thousand dollars of repairs. Um, diaries, roof of seems to be solid and stable. And um, I, the neighborhood I never is really a pretty nice recorded. neighborhood. I've always quiet. been recording. Um, I'm out um, here on a Sunday I morning. Clock on. time right now so, but is eleven fifty-two. Uh, that 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 is the um, first property that uh, I was able to get. And, and these are typical uh, of the type of properties that we look at. Um, this is really on the low end, though. You know, uh, it's um, really pretty good deal, but at least within our... It was about 27 grand. This is the YouTube channel itself. Uh, you know, I've got different training videos on here um, that shows you uh, when we go through the training sessions. Uh, you know, I had, you know, this, Hello. this is our website. This is Calvin Butler, uh, um, senior partner. One of the first websites I built. Chief you know, operations um, officer for JCB so, Acquisitions, the James Clark and Butler Real Estate Acquisitions. This is, it. This, is um, this is training video and, number two. Um, this video this website has um, is a training again, session for our new for, um, acquisition for associates investing. Um, that come into you know, JCB, um, um, they come into the JCB opportunity. Um, well, this good, high school know, training session is, is, is geared to show you how I, I easy it is, how easy we've made it for There's our right acquisition there. reps There's to a, be able to search There's for properties um, and go through the whole process of submitting the, the property to the JCB uh, um, network. I even had it is something here where fairly you can easy and we have supplied you with everything you need within our website. And within this website, you'll be able to go and search for properties and be able to find those local homes, the REOs, and things of that nature, things you need to be successful with JCB. First of all, you have our homepage. You really can't hear both of y'all talking. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Hold on. Because the video is still talking. As you can see here, and this is where you would start. As you can see here, once you become an employee of... All right, there we go. But, you know, we had all the pertinent contracts and things you needed to flip a home, to get it on the contract. You did the contract. Your acquisitions work cheap. Um, your assign the most important thing was the assignment of contract. Um, you would pull that up, and basically, this allowed you to go out and to let's say you had a find a home that was abandoned. Well, you could actually look it up on this site to see what it's worth. It takes you right to the property appraisal's office and tells you what the tax value is. Then you can pull up the appraised value on it. What was the last appraisal? So, you got a good idea of what the home would be worth, and then once you did that. You can look up to see who the owners of the property was, or who owns the property now. And also, you can look up to see how much they are behind on their property taxes on it. 
So if you've got a home that you look up and it's worth $70,000 tax value, and they're behind $23,000 you know, on their taxes, or $12,000 you know, on their taxes, or $7,000, it's obvious that they have no intentions of fishing up on those taxes. So then you basically just contact them and say, hey, how you doing? I'm such and such and such. Um, I understand you have a home that's you know over on such and such, such street. What do you plan on doing with it? Uh, well, you know, my grandmother left that home that she died a few years back. I, you know, I got a home, you know, there's not much I can do with it. You know, I owe X amount of money on taxes. Yes, you have to owe about eight thousand dollars on it. What if I told you if I can get you eight thousand plus another eight thousand forward, would you be willing to sign it over to, to, to me and get it fixed up so I can flip it out? Always want to be transparent. Now, someone that's in about to get the home taken by the state or the county anyway, that's a good deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just you just allow them to make eight grand and pay off and pay off the debt. So you do what's called the assignment of contract. And this is it right here. You know, assignment of contract, they did just then and then the buying between Calvin Butler. Or and or Mike Jones or JC acquisitions here and after the assigners and the sellers here and after the sellers under this under an agreement of the purchase of real estate um, here and after contract dated you know contract period 120 days. You know, we always try to max it out for 120 days. Okay, basically what this does is this: the owner of the house, the rightful owner of the house, is giving you rights up to the home for this period of time. And by giving you rights onto the home, you can do what you need to do to it to get it ready and sell it as if you owned it. Now, when you sell it, you're gonna owe them what you have contracted with them that you're going to pay them for. So once you find a buyer, once you got it fixed up, mold the yard, do a fresh paint, a paint on it, or whatever the case may be, and then you can either go to a realtor and say, hey, I got this home on for sale, it's got a tax value of seventy thousand dollars. It's got a it's got a market value of a hundred and ten thousand dollars or ninety thousand dollars. I want to put it on the market for fifty thousand dollars. That's twenty thousand dollars back of what the tax value is on it. Is that not a good deal? Yep. And I promised the owner that I would get them what sixteen thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars to pay off their what, their lien, and eight thousand dollars that's going that's going to go in their pocket. So once I get a buyer for it, then I do what's called a simultaneous closing. I schedule a simultaneous closing at the the title company, right? Where I'm there, the person I'm buying the house from is there. The people who are buying the house for me are all there. The person who is I'm buying the house from the people who are buying the house from me. They bring their bank check or, the, or their bank sends over a check for the entire amount of the house. Plus, they have a check that's it's been all um, divided up. They have a check that's going to the owner. They have a check that's going to this um, to the county to pay off the taxes. There's a check, and the rest of it that's left over is coming back to who? Me. Now, here's what happens. The lawyer is there. They move paperwork over to the owner where they are where I am buying it from them. Right? Sign that paperwork, sign, 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 sign. Move it over me, I sign, 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 sign. Then we move it over here where they are buying it from me. Sign. I own the home, literally I own the home for a period of about what? Five minutes. And just made about 40 grand on it. That's how you that's how you flip a home the right way. I didn't know I had all this kind of stuff inside my head. That's basically <laughs> how you sell a contract. Exactly. That's all it is. It's not selling a home. It's selling no. A contract. I mean, it's. I mean, it is selling a home, but it's a. But it's an assignment of contract. The contract has yeah. been assigned to you. And you sell the contract to someone else. Now, because you could, can't really list a person home without their permission. Exactly. That's why you have to get the assignment you of contract. You got to get this contract right. You got to get this assignment of contract. And a lot of people don't even know about this, this little assignment of contract. Okay. It's a way to, to get access to a home to get, you know, 
layman's term, temporary ownership of a home. And it gives you enough time to uh, get it spruced up and put it back on the market, get it sold, and then you take care of paying uh, everybody else that's old money on it and you keep what's left over. That's it. Okay. Um, but, you know, I have been dabbling with the idea of creating a um, another platform that just encompasses and teach people how to make money, period. It's not just one thing, not just the logistic industry, not just real estate, not just, you know, um, the, you know, the stock market, not just this, not just that, not just how to sign up for, you know, the, um, what's the things called, um, um, the affiliate programs, how to make money um, from that. Look, all of this stuff is what helped get me to where I am now. No, no, no one thing got me to where I am now. The trucking industry paid a big part. This played a pretty big part, right? But it was a whole bunch of things that I was able to do and do fairly easy, okay? That kept adding to my wealth. They kept adding, 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 adding. They kept creating streams of income. That's why when I tell you that my wife and I, we don't worry about where money's coming from, we literally don't. There's stuff that we get money from that I don't forgot about. We still get money from it. Because of what I put in place, you know, you know seven, eight, nine years, nine, ten years ago. And this is what I mean by when I said that when you all come into our platform, I want to teach you all how to become logistics entrepreneurs. You know, I was talking with someone today, <coughs> um, another freight broker trainer called me up. I'm not gonna tell you his. I'm not gonna tell you his name because you probably don't. You probably don't want me to see it. But um, he's African American too, and ain't that many of us out here? So you probably know he is. He called me up, and he was like, "Man, I gotta tell you, um, you know, <laughs> I didn't think you could. I didn't think you would go this far. I didn't think you could do it. But when I look at what you've accomplished, he said, I gotta, I gotta tip my hat to you. He said, I really do have to tip my hat to you. He said, you know." You, you got a lot of knowledge and your platform. I am just taken aback by it because you've done something that's totally outside of what everyone else is doing and you're making it work. Because all of us, he was putting himself in that category too. All of us, we have pretty much the same thing in common. We show people how to become a freight broker. We show people how to become a dispatcher or a an independent dispatch. We show people how to become a lease owner operator to you know lease out you know um your authority and this and that. But you show people how to make money. That's a totally different thing from what they're doing. They're showing you how to become these things, but they're not really showing people how to make money. Right? Big difference. Big difference. We're not in the showing you how to become a freight broker. We're not in the showing you how to become a dispatcher. We're in the showing you how to make money in the logistics industry. Okay? I mean, to be honest with you, you can go to Google to learn how to become a freight broker or how to become a dispatcher. Yeah. But that's what they make their money on. We do something that's a little bit more in depth that requires a little bit more of my personal time with you all, that requires long-term commitment from myself to you all. And that's showing you how to make money within the industry. Regardless of what it is, we show you how to make money on so many different levels. And not, how to, not just how to make it, but how to grow it, how to reinvest it, right? How to solve problems that will help you make even more money. You know, so, and when he explained that to me, I said, you know what, you're exactly right. I didn't think anybody else would get it. <laughs> He's like, he, just, he said, oh yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, he said, when I look at what you've done, look, I got it. And he's a big fan of the Assurance USA. You know, he was like, you know, he was like something like that would have never even crossed my mind. 
and the way it's laid out now, it's, it's just so. It's it's it it it, it 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 it's like you look at it and say, "Wow, how come I didn't think of this?" You know. So I'm not trying to you know toot my own horn or anything, but you know, it, it's it was just amazing that you know some of the same people that gave us so much pushback, they're looking at what we're doing now, and they can't. They don't have a choice but to admire it. They don't have a choice. Okay, because we did make it work. And we are doing something that's that's never been done before. Okay? It is completely original. Okay, so um, let's continue and let's make it happen. Questions, questions, questions. But, but yes, I am considering um, another type of platform that you know goes into all of these things and, and just in general um, uh, that deals with financial health. Um, I've actually been approached by someone to um, to do what they call, uh, but this was before the whole Corona thing happened. I was approached by somebody to do um, 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 like uh, speaking tools uh, or speaking engagements, stuff like that. Um, but eh, I don't know if I can do that now. It's just, with everything that's going on, I try to stay in. I try to stay inside as much as possible. I, my wife will tell you, I, I become a hermit. I rarely go out. I rarely go go past my own neighborhood. You know, every now and then we'll jump in the, you know, jump in the SUV and, you know, mask up, glove down, and go to Walmart or go to Costco or something. <laughs> but other than that, that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. You know, walk the dog around the neighborhood. But other than that, that's about it. You know, I stay at home. Okay. What's going on? Um, you know, they're talking about shutting Florida down again completely. Um, that was on the news today. Uh, we reached an all time high in increased cases of coronavirus, all time high in um, most deaths in, deaths in a week. And uh, it's it's getting scary. And talking about this a couple of days ago, you know how that's going to affect the industry. And there is going to be another shutdown. There's, there's no way to avoid it. Um, other countries are talking about banning, you know, American citizens from coming into the country. It's ironic. We were talking about putting up a wall. Now a wall is going to be put up around us, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's kind of ironic, don't you think? You know, we started out, you know, <laughs> we, we started out, you know, trying to keep other people out. And now we're getting to the point where no one's going to let us leave. So, you know, get ready for it. That, that second shutdown is coming. You know, just, just, just be ready for it. Okay. All right. Uh, questions, questions, questions. But yeah, that's, that I am. I'm thinking about doing and but I gotta get this up and going first. I gotta get you all on track with uh, with the assurance you will say before I can even even start to even, you know, try to dive back into stuff like that. Um I've okay. gotta get you all up going and making money and you know getting everything running smoothly. And then once that happens and I kind of can put it on autopilot, be and I'll take a look at some other stuff and see what our next move is gonna be. Okay. Okay, I know you're busy and everything, and you mentioned um, helping us with our um, contracts if needed with partners. Um, when, yeah. will, when will you be available to um, for us to um, form it up to for you to help us with that? Because I have more than one. Yeah, if you got somebody you're a partner with, just try to give me a call. Try to fit yourself in, and okay. I'll try to make myself available to you, and we'll go on Rocket Lawyer. And okay, um, I appreciate that. Yeah, we'll go on Rocket Lawyer and. Um, you need both of us up there at the same time, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cause, yeah, because I got to know what y'all are agreeing to, what y'all want to stipulate, you know, and that type of stuff. But, okay. we'll, but we'll go on Rocket Lawyer, Rocket we'll create it, and then I'll uh, create it, and then have Rocket Lawyer to send it to you all for you both to Dr. side, and then that'll be it. And I want to say one more thing um, before I let someone else talk. Um, my partner in North Carolina, um, he called me and he said he do want to partner up with me in North Carolina. His name's Cedric. I believe he might be on the call. Um, he might need information. Hi, right. Cedric. 
All right, so y'all are doing North Carolina, right? Together. Yes. Yes, I was just doing the uh, 2,500. So we're still Close. need other partner. So you, so y'all still need one more partner. Yes. What, what are y'all doing? The 10K or the 5K? Yes, 10K. Okay. Yeah, you gonna need another partner. But you have what? Hmm. Five thousand. Five K. All right. So you have half of it. He has a. He, he has a. He has a quarter. We need another quarter. Right. All right. Can I take that spot? Y'all hear? Y'all hear it out there? Is anybody out there got a quarter that they want to go in on North Carolina? Quarter sounds good. I'm tempted. <laughs> All right, I'm in. Now, who is that? Onye Gibson. All right. So we got Gibson. So does that complete it right there? Gibson and Cedric and Pompey, right? So Gibson agree with North Carolina? Yes. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So Gibson has a quarter, Cedric has a quarter, and you have a half dollar. Right? Yeah. Or five. <laughs> or, or, or five dollar bill. Or whatever it is with me. So that makes the 10. And that means that um, you all's um, uh, um, um, license usage fee is only going to be fifteen hundred dollars or twelve point five percent, whichever y'all decide y'all want to do. Okay, so that works out really, really well. I have a, I have a, a very low license usage fee, and that's split up, you know, fifty percent, then quarter, quarter. So you really can't beat that. Um, so shoot me what y'all. Um, all three of you all, shoot me your commitment um, for North Carolina, and um, I'll and I will redo the map, to reflect that. Okay, okay, and I'm gonna upgrade to 10k in Texas. Okay, just by myself. Just shoot it over. Yeah. Just shoot it over to me on the email. Um, that way I can make upgrades. Okay. Um, so I can make the upgrades you know, on the contracts and stuff, and um. Everything I'm to work. Look, look, everybody. Uh, look, this is right around the corner. This, this is. I told y'all people were gonna start to move fast from this point on, and it's right around the corner. The Fourth of July is not that far away. It's like next Friday. If I'm not mistaken, right? Fourth is. Uh, what are we looking at? The fourth is. Yep. Yeah, Next Friday, all right? The rest of this week, now tomorrow is Thursday and Friday, so I don't have any meetings or something that's set out in there, so I'm going to be, my focus on these two days is to get everything ready for the merchant account on Saturday. Uh, we're going to have a class, and then I'm going to be contacting all of the um, branch owners to um, collect their fees to get them into the escrow account. Then on the 29th, all fees are going to have to be in. And then I'm gonna reach back um, on on probably somewhere uh, probably on Sunday. I'm gonna have another. I'm gonna schedule another meeting with my uh, with my corporate staff because I've got the contracts ready, and we're gonna be going over with. I'm gonna meet with them and get them signed up on their contracts and give them their um, their duties or what they're gonna be assigned off to do. So they can start uh, formulating their game plans with any of the brands that uh, Mr. Israel need to do on the investment side on, you know, the whole nine yards. So they're all going to have their directives of what they need to do for the company. And then we are going to start um, collectively. Um, I'm, I'm getting my, uh, my numbers together for the branding with the, uh, um, the posters and the flyers that's going to be up in the Truck stops, um, got a kind of, of, of a preliminary um, figure on that. Um, it looks like it's probably going to run us. I'm not going to be able to put it in every truck stop now. We're not going to be going to every truck stop. I would love to, but it's not going to every truck stop. We're going to be strategically placing them throughout the country in some of the high traffic um, trucking um, regions. Um, some of the, we're going to go for the largest truck stops, like the ones in Texas, Oklahoma. Y'all know about that big without the end. I'm in Oklahoma, right? 
the big um, T8 and big petrols, a lot of them out there. But we're going to be in some of the bigger truck stops. And <clears throat> that's probably going to run us about 30 grand on just being in in a lot of the truck stops on a continuous basis. And then we're going to look at billboards that are going to be um, strategically placed throughout the country um, on the on the trucking lanes, um, the lanes that go up Pennsylvania, the lanes that run from Florida over to California, the lanes that run up the middle um, of the country, and then you got the lanes that run over from um, here coming back down south. So we're going to try and fill those lanes with the billboards so that no matter where you are in the four day states, you're going to see, you're going to get a glimpse of who we are, what we do, and how to get in contact. Okay. And all that is going to drive traffic on top of the fact that we're going to do some crazy branding on social media. Okay. I'm going to have everybody doing branding. I'm also opening up our opportunity to, remember, I talked about bringing, starting the YouTube subscriptions. So with the, uh, our YouTube subscribers who constantly watch us all the time, they'll be able to subscribe <coughs> to a monthly subscription that they would pay to come in on our live training and be interactive. I'm also opening up the opportunity to them to be member specials because we have, we're going to need to have our branches filled with member specials. Okay. Um, and plus, these other states that corporate is taking over, we're going to have to fill these states with member specials. So we're going to do that. And with our national campaign to bring in our, with Indeed, um, the salary um, um, booking agents, um, that's going to fill up the rest to so round us out, have a good, you know, nice staff, a corporate staff, and take care of everything we need to take care of. So, uh, let's get ready. Let's get ready. Um, Question, Mr. Coven. Huh? Question. Yeah. Would uh, the corporate um, sell those other states later, or are they keeping it for good? Oh, we're, we're, we're always open for people to come in and, you know, take ownership. We, we don't want to run those states ourselves. We do it. Okay. Our, we do it. I'm out of necessity for now, but the goal is to have all these have a red dot in all these states. Mm -hmm. red, the red dots means you know branch ownership. Mm -hmm. That's the goal is to fill up the entire map with red dots. I, mean, I don't want to have to deal with you know, trying to run a. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, I really don't. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Um, you know, and. To be honest with you, when we do put people in place, you know, to be our members, especially, we're going to have one or two people who are, who, who, who are going to be administrators because we don't have any, you know, any um, um, uh, owners there. So we're going to have administrators, you know, in those states. But the goal is to put a red dot in every state. That's the goal. Okay. If we can put a red dot in every state, that would give us a marketing budget that rivals, you know, shoot, Walmart. Think about it. If we got a red dot in every state, and if everybody was on the 10K you know, enrollment and only paying $1,500 on their um, monthly, um, monthly uh, trademark usage, okay, this is how you keep, this is how you, this is how you keep an adequate branding and advertising and marketing budget. Okay, because something like this couldn't sustain itself without mass marketing. Okay, we all have to agree on that. In order to be able to do marketing what we want to, we got to fuel it, you know, and that fuel is money. But it costs to market, it costs to brand the way that we want to brand. So if we've got 48 states covered and and if everyone was just doing just 1500 that fee, that's your branding, that's your budget, monthly. Okay, that's, that's your advertising, branding, and marketing budget monthly. 
not a bad marketing budget, right? Y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. that this, is, this is the whole reason for this, so that we can market you all's branches so we can keep traffic flowing to your branch. Okay? So um, that's our goal. And our goal is to fill all these up. No? Calvin, I got a question. Yes, sir. Um, I've got access to a lot of drivers around the United States. And <clears throat> how do I pitch to them? That's that's what I'm looking for. How to how to how to get it over to them? You get it over to them by telling them to go to nocheapfreight.com. They go to nocheapfreight.com. Okay, I have to tell them. I have to tell them enough to get them interested yeah. to get them well, there. Hold on, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You get them over to, to nocheapfreight.com. You let them know that the RBS Insurance USA is a national flat fee dispatch firm with the home of the minimum rate per mile guarantee. Drive vans assurance two dollars per minimum rate per mile guarantee. For well, flatbed, two dollars and fifty cent minimum rate per mile guarantee, and refrigerated, three dollars minimum rate per mile guarantee. Flat fee dispatching, we save them on average a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per month because they're only paying a thousand dollars a month flat fee dispatching, or two hundred and fifty dollars per week, regardless of how many loads we dispatch, regardless of how much money they make. They're only paying that. That saves them about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per month. We, the guarantee is we are guaranteeing them that if we are dispatching for them, no matter how many loads we dispatch them for that week, if we dispatch them three loads, four loads, five or six loads, or three loads a day, or whatever the case may be, <clears throat> at the end of that week, we are guaranteeing you that if you are a dry van, your average will be above $2 per mile. If you are a flatbed, your average for that week will be above $2.50 per mile. If you are a refrigerated, your average for that week would be above $3 per mile. And if for some reason we can't keep you at that average that week, we are going to pay you a dollar per mile on the lowest paying freight that we found for you regardless of what the mileage is on it. So if we can't find you a, the, the right um, price freight to keep you at that average, I'm sorry, to keep you above that average, if we go below that average, if the lowest paying load went 2,200 miles, that means we're going to cut you a check for $2,200 on top of what you already paid. If your lowest paying load went 1,000 miles, we're going to pay you $1,000 out of our own proceeds on top of the money you already made. Is that not enough to sell it? it sounds good. Um, and you know, if, that's like not enough, if you stick with us for the first year, after 12 months, your monthly Dispatch fee dropped down to six to six hundred and thirty three dollars per month, and all of our factoring is done through two of the top factoring companies in the industry. So you're getting preferred factoring rates. You know you're going to get your money fast. You don't have to worry about how fast your money is going to come to you. Don't worry about who's factoring. Question. Mm -hmm. If um, an owner operator takes the um, Assurance USA uh, package, and uh, are they going to pay anything extra towards the factoring, or is it part of the one thousand dollars a month? No, it's not part of one thousand dollars a month. Factoring is factoring. Factoring comes off of the load when they when they pay the money. Oh, what we're doing is we're they're being locked in at at the preferred rate. But well, you got some owner operators that are paying what five percent. I'm paying what three percent, two percent, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But because we're doing so much business with these two factories, they're giving us the preferred rate. So it's going to keep them below. You know, they're not going to be paying that five percent like most of them um, normally pay. They're going to stay at that preferred rate, which is going to okay. be between what that two and two and a quarter to maybe three percent tops. 
Okay. But of course, the factory is not included in that because you don't know what the factory is going to be until you price out the loads, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Another question there, please. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I'm, I don't want to take you backwards, but it's just a little bit uh, skipping on my end. What would the individual um, independent dispatchers that are selling, you know, dispatching for customers with um, owner operators with um, Assurance USA, how much are they going to be paid? How are they getting paid? Anybody want to answer that? We've been going over this all week. (laughs) We've been going over this all week. Um, Okay. Let's go back to it. All right. Uh, let me pull this up. Just a second. Uh, oh, I want to. Um, um, I want y'all to take. Um, I'm gonna look something real quick. Uh, Insurance USA. Right here. Remember I asked you all to go on Facebook and create your own Assurance USA branch? Y'all, y'all remember that? Yes. Some of you all have. Somebody's created an Assurance USA Jordan. There it is. Assurance USA Georgia branch. Okay. Uh, you know. Somebody has taken the initiative and they created the insurance USA Georgia brand. If you are a branch owner, um, you want to create a presence for your branch. You want to start branding your branch, right? You want people to you know, owner operators to come and sign up with, with your branch, right? Okay. So, you know, take the initiative, you know, use some of the same, you know, stuff. Stuff that, that that we make available to you all, like this stuff like this right here, like this little logo and all that type of stuff. Y'all can use this stuff and create your own brand. This is this is a pretty good Facebook page. I like this. They, they, they've done a good job. Who's and whose page is this? Man. Michael. Is it? Georgia. <laughs> Is my Georgia branch owners on here? Yeah. Okay. Nice page. Nice page. Um. All right. Yeah, I'm going to like those pages. You know, the branches, our main page, you know, things like that. Uh, all right. Let's go to this compensation. Yeah. All right. Member specialists are paid 25% of what the branch is paid. Okay. When you um when 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 you contract and on operate. All right. So let's break that down for you. Let's break that down. All right, here we go. All right, if you are a member specialist, this is this is your breakdown here. This is the breakdown for the branch. Okay, as a member specialist, you are getting twenty five percent of the branch's twenty five um, hundred dollar um, policy holder account minimum qualifier. That's the way it was set up before. Now the way it's set up, you still get that, but you get that at the end of the ten months. What you're gonna get up front is you're gonna get this. You're gonna get your 25 percent of the thousand dollars that they're paying each month, whether it's two fifty a week or thousand dollars per month. So the let's go to my calculator. So the member specialist, when you sign up and on operator a dispatch agreement with Assurance USA, okay, they're gonna start paying a thousand dollars per month or two hundred fifty dollars per week. Either way, it's the same thing. All right, the 
branch is going to get 25% of that. That's the branch's cut, $250. You are going to get 25% of the $250. $62.50. Now, if you sign up 10 of those each month, which is what everyone's saying is what the average how much going to be. So $62.50. You sign up 10 each month, that means you're going to be getting $625 the first month in your residual. The next month you sign up 10 more, that's going to be what? Another $625. Now you're getting $1,250. The next month you do 10 more, that's another $625. So now you're getting 1875 Then you sign up 10 more. You see how this is going? Yes, sir. You see how it's going? So your monthly residuals is, is basically just compound, right? Okay. Right? Your monthly okay. residuals are compound. Now, after 10 months, your owner operator has paid a total of, of what? $10,000. $10,000. Which means the branch then gets their what? 25%. Their 25% of that because that is the actual enrollment fee for the owner operator. They're not paying it all at once. They're paying it over a period of, of, of 10 months. This is why after the first year, we dropped their payments from $1,000 down to $633 a month, right? So the, the branch gets a bonus on that of 25%. $2,500, right? Yes. But, all right, so if you get your bonus off of, you get 25% of that. Now, if they did 10 in January, in October, that's 2,500 times 10, right? Yes. So that's what? 2,500 times 10. 250. 25,000. 25,000. 25, sorry. Now, if they've been signing up 10, averaging 10 owner operators every month, by the, also, by the time you reach your 10th month, the monthly residuals are up to what? Another 25000 right? Right? Right. So they've been growing it $2,500 every month. So by the time they get to the 10th month, they have a monthly residual of $25,000. Now, they, now their 10-month they're, they're year-end bonus is kicking in. And they get another $25,000. So in November, the ones they signed up in February, they're going to get a $25,000 bonus on them. And then in March, for the ones they signed, I'm sorry, for December, for the ones they signed up in March, they're going to get a $25,000 bonus plus whatever their residuals are at that time during that time. So it just keeps compounding and keeps growing. <clears throat> now, after your first year, your first 12 months, your commission is going to drop off a little bit on that, on those ones you did that that year before, right? But you're still going to have a good number of commissions. Plus, you're going to have the ones who just came in that year. So you're getting your what? Your Twenty-five thousand dollars bonus. Call. So by the time you hit your second year, by the time you go into your third year, you're in that you're in this neighborhood of two point seven million dollars in monthly residuals. Wow. Okay, and over here, if you're doing as a member specialist, remember you're getting the 25 percent of that of that what twenty five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Sixty two fifty, right? Okay. But by that time, you should be up to about that much per month anyway on your residuals after ten months, right? All right. So you're getting that six hundred twenty-five dollars in your monthly residual off of the thousand dollars per month, which is really what the twenty-five, the two hundred fifty dollars that they're making from the branch. That's you're getting your sixty-two fifty, which is you ten at six hundred and what? Twenty-five 
$25. And if you're doing that every month, by the time you get to your 10th month, you should be up to that in your monthly residuals. Plus your year end bonuses is going to be that right there too. So you really got that $62.50 after month 10, the $62.50 is really you're getting double that because you're getting that, that year end bonus from that 10K or that 25K or whatever it may be. Right? So you're getting that times two on that first one. And then the next month, you're getting that $62.50 plus what? Plus what? Six two fifty plus sixty two fifty plus whatever you added that month before for the residual. Wow. And if you're doing that, just averaging ten a month, right? If you're doing that, just averaging ten a month. By the time you get to your third year, going to your third year as a um, member specialist, you should be in the neighborhood of. Six hundred thousand dollars in monthly residuals going to your third year. Wow. Now, am I saying that you're going to retain all your own operators? Probably not. Are you going to retain a good portion of them? Yeah, yes. a lot of them. They're going to just going to roll over from year to year. Why? Because you're going to be doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. We're going to be doing as a corporation. We're going to be reaching out to the what? The shippers and the brokers, and getting them to send us over the loads that are paying the amount of money that we need to keep our owner operators above subpar. And if we can keep satisfying them with that respect, they'll keep signing on with us, not to mention the fact that after the first year, they save even more money because they drop from a thousand dollars per month down to six hundred and thirty three dollars per month. So now we're not saving them a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, but we're saving them almost two thousand dollars a month on their dispatcher fees, and we're making them a great average pay across the board. We're keeping them above subpar rate, which is where they want to be. There's no reason for them not to stick with us at that point. Now, that's based on direct compensation from what you're bringing in on the owner operator. I haven't even <laughs> I haven't even shown y'all what the figures are on the the factory. Because remember, the agreement we have with the factory companies is what? Because I'm not telling you what the what the contract um, we have with them with our what? With our affiliate uh, contract we have with them. Does anybody remember what that was when they came on? I think they said. Huh? It's 250 dollars for every owner operator we sign up um, to the factory. And we get 10% of the factory fees of all the factory. So guess what? If you sign up 10 owner operators and they're doing the, and they're doing the factory. Right? Guess what? You're gonna get your bonus from those too. Would they pay out? <laughs> and not to mention the fact that our financial department are gonna um we're gonna um develop and look into the invoice packaging and the set and the selling of the invoice notes. So with those sales, you get your bonus from those too. This is how you run a, well, this is how I run um, a major corporation. We don't, we're not paying you all like employees. You all are being paid like partners at just whatever level you at whatever level of the partnership you're at. You all are being paid just like we're being paid. We're not having you all, we're not paying you all a one-time fee. You bring, you bring a company in. We pay you a one-time fee for it, and then you got to keep bringing 
bringing companies in just to maintain that same pay. And you don't get any residuals. We're paying you every time we make money off of them. The branch makes money off of them. You make money off of them. We make money on the factory. The branch makes money on the factory. You make money on the factory. We make money on selling the invoices and packing them up. The branch makes money on the invoices and packing up. You make money on the invoices and being sold and packed and packing up. So in every aspect where we make money, you make money. Not only that, we're paying you all part of percent of your compensation then pay through Bitcoin. So you don't even make your money on that too. You all making money exactly the same way we're making money. It's just that at whatever level you at is the percentage. But it's all predicated on what? 25%. Possible. So, Calvin, um, what happens if, like, the app Robinhood crash? Do you lose your money? No, because you, your money is not tied up with Robinhood. Your money is tied up in the stock. You get it? Yeah, I get, I get that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, but I know they be having, um, they be having issues with their. App sometimes that's fine. I mean, what kind of doesn't have issues with app? All I know is that I've, I've more than doubled my money since I thought it was good. Whatever I put in, I've doubled it. Who else is doing Robert Hood? Uh, what's his name? Darry. You doing Robert? I'm a Darry on that night. Yeah, I'm here. Right okay. Have you doubled your money with Robin Hood? Have I did what? Have you doubled your money with Robin Hood? Yes, I have. <laughs> two for two? <laughs> Look, I'm not going to encourage you all to do That's the way to go. I'm, I'm not discouraged about that. I'm just saying, um, like, I mean, if the the app frees up or something like that. You okay, can't I mean, get your money out right then and there. I understand, right? but That's what, what happens if Russia drops the nuclear bomb on us tomorrow? <laughs> I guess we'll be saving money because we won't be able to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, my, 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 my point is, why worry about stuff that's probably never going to happen? I mean, we, we live with risk every day. Okay? And we, that's even more so now. What happens if you do, do? Do you all know that there's a good percentage of people who roll out of bed and slip and break their neck um, every day? I mean, if we wanted to be completely protected, we would never get out of bed in the morning. How many people die in car crashes every year? But then stop you from getting in the car, though, um, does it? It doesn't even stop you from getting into a car that's driven by somebody else that you don't even know. Uber, Lyft, <laughs> right? Take the bus, <laughs> take the train, all these things you do. You put your hands in someone else's lives all the time. And everything we do. You know, take a risk of getting struck by lightning. Just get out, <laughs> you know. But fortune favors who? The brave. The, the bold. I can tell you what's not going to happen if you don't take any risk. You're not going to advance. You, know, you can't. <laughs> you can't become independently wealthy without taking risks. You just can't. I don't know that. unless uh, unless somebody before you and your family took this and gave it to you. <laughs> you can do it that way, like some people we know. <laughs> All right, but if you're not that fortunate, you know that your dad doesn't give you 127 million dollars on your 19th birthday. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> and then and then you lose it by the time you're 26. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> <laughs> All of us are not that fortunate. Okay? We're just not. 
Dude, we can't even we can't even get reparations that's old us for six hundred years of slavery. <laughs> so we got so so look, you got no choice but you not there what take some risks, right? Right? Don't right. be afraid. Of, don't be afraid of risk. All you I'm can not, do. Look, I just want to. Yeah, look. All you can cover do, that for people who might, including yeah. myself. Yeah, okay. there is never gonna be a one hundred percent to anything you do. Never. I I never made that claim. I never made that claim that anything that we do is one hundred percent foolproof. I can't make that claim. There's nothing in life I can make that claim with. There's nothing in life you can make that claim with. All we can do is we can mitigate the risk and evaluate and position ourselves to have a higher odds than, than normal to succeed. That's all you can do. Okay. There was there was no guarantee that I was going to get myself out of the homeless shelter. But that didn't stop me from trying. There was no guarantee that I was going to flip that first house. That didn't stop me from trying. You're right. No guarantee at all. And look at the end results. I haven't seen. Now I'm not saying that I've succeeded at everything, but I've succeeded at more things than I failed at. And even the things that I failed at, they serve to teach me how to succeed. Okay, so let's make that perfectly clear. Okay. Um, you know, life is about risk, but if you don't take it, you ain't gonna never, you ain't gonna never get nowhere. And, and, and I, I just, I prefer to keep on the move. I, I just prefer to keep, you know, moving, you know, upward, 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 upward until I can't move no more. So, but I don't want to go back to where I started from. That I don't want to. Do. And I know for sure that if I don't take a risk, that's where. You, that's probably where I wind up at. I'd rather take the risk. Because the reward is much greater when you take it. All right. All right. Uh, it's 9 17. I told my wife I'll be done with this by 9 o'clock. Um, don't forget tomorrow. Um, I've got a lot of stuff I'm going to be doing. I'm going to uh, make some changes to the website. I'm going to try to have that. That um, that um, sign up page ready, along with the, um, the Assurance USA dispatch agreement. I'm gonna have that up um, um, by Saturday. So by the time we hit, we hit Saturday's show, we'll be able to pull up the website, pull up the dispatch agreements. You know, sign people up, whole nine yards. Okay, get, get people signed up, ready to go. Um, I got um, in case y'all haven't noticed. Oh Lord, have mercy! We got. Um, let me just show you all this right here. Um, we've got a lot of prospects. So I have to start calling back on you lot of field. So y'all get ready to die. <laughs> we got a lot of people to respond to. Um, um, you lot of field. A lot of people. A lot of people have expressed interest. Uh, a lot of them are going to be pleasantly surprised. Some of them came in, came to us when we was doing the other stuff, and then we've got um, some more that have come in since then. We have left, you know, remarks and things, and want to know about things and things of that nature. Um, I'm looking for you. Messages. When do you say you're gonna get the member specialists? Um, oh, we're gonna start. Uh, that's gonna uh, start tomorrow and Friday. Okay, so y'all will expect to hear some stuff about. I'm gonna send out a mass, mass email, to everybody, and uh, you all will be able to contact your. Um, that's why we're doing the mail. 
That's why I'm trying to get the map so you all, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it out to, to all of you, and you all will be able to contact the branch owners and um, let them know that you want that you are in their, you know, um, their state and you want to be a member specialist. Um, we're also going to have the Monday, we're going to get you all, get everybody set up with the merchant account. Everybody go on and create their username and password off of the merchant account. Have everybody go on and create their username and password for the CNTMS to get you all in your branches there. So you all will have access to both those. Um, Saturday after the class, I'm going to be contacting all of the um, branch owners and we're going to start collecting your um, your um, trademark license fee and get that into the escrow account so we can get rolling on the branding and things that we, that we need to do. Um, because next Friday, uh, we're launching. We're launching. Now, y'all probably say, but I don't know the pitch because there is no pitch. Look, there's not a pitch. Okay, that's the whole point. You're not calling up people and you, 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 you all won't be doing cold calls. Everything that we're going to be doing, you all, everybody's going to be branding to drive traffic. Okay, there's a big difference between driving um, traffic and cold calls. Cold calling, I mean, let's face it, that's hard, right? Right? Right. But if you're just putting stuff out there and you're getting people to respond to it, that's traffic, right? The people are responding to what you're putting out there. That means they're halfway sold already. You don't have to sell them. You just have to show them the benefit. If you take them to the website, and you just go through the website like I just did. Just go through the website, and it has the benefit. If you want to go to this directly to this page right here, the assurance page, right? You are straight to that page. Minimum rate per mile guarantee. This is this will sell it right here. That this on top of what the flat rate dispatching. Minimum rate per mile guarantee driving currently. 68% of all drive-in freight in the industry is less than $2 per mile. Assurance USA's commitment, all freight dispatched by Assurance USA will reflect a minimum weekly average of $2 per mile or greater. Or we will pay an additional dollar per mile on the lowest paying freight dispatched to you by us, regardless of the mileage. Then I said, okay, uh, can you explain to me again? Basically, what we're saying is this, sir. If we dispatch you five loads this week, three loads, six loads, 12 loads, whatever the case may be, and then we average them all out, if the average doesn't come up to at least $2 per mile for your drive in, we're going to pay you a dollar per mile for the lowest paying load we found for you that week. If that load ran 1,000 miles, you get $1,000. If that load ran 2,200 miles, you get $2,200. If that load ran 800 miles, you get 800 bucks. Watch the response. Really? Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, following conditions and restrictions may apply. All freight for the week must be freight that was dispatched by an Assurance USA branch and accepted by the owner-operator contract. Because obviously, we're not going to you a dollar per mile, you know, if, if you ran a cheap, cheap, cheap load and, it, and, it, and you did that, we didn't dispatch that to you, you just did it on your own and it brought down the average, right? Okay, so it has to be, we're going to be responsible for what we are responsible for. And same thing with flatbed. You can ask me, I'm telling you, you got, oh, I got a flatbed. You just skip right now, this is the flatbed portion. Then you just tell us, and on top of that, we're saving you a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month on your dispatch fee because we are because you're only paying a flat fee of thousand dollars a month or two hundred fifty dollars a week, whichever way you want to work it out. And on top of that, if you stick with us for the first year, after that, for the, after the first year, your dispatch fee dropped from a thousand dollars a month down to six hundred thirty-three dollars a month. You still get all the same benefits. 
Is that not enough to sell it? What else do you need? Okay, so there you have it. Um, this is not a hard sale. It, it, it God knows it really isn't. This is this is actually way easier than how much money you need to move your truck, right? <laughs> right. 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 Come on. Yeah. And we had and we had people that that was racking up on that. And that now that was a sale. You had to remember I told you all I wanted you all to practice your sales technique, watch yourself in the mirror. You had to you all had to learn how to become salespeople. This right here is a no brainer. You ain't gotta sell this. You just gotta show the benefits. That's all you gotta do. Most of the people that come to the website and they read it, the website is gonna sell them. You just gotta take the order. This is not something you, that you gotta sell. You don't. You really don't. Okay, I mean, you really don't. Had a refrigerator guy call me up just what, was it, was it yesterday? Yeah, called me up just yesterday. <laughs> he said, "Man, I love this." He said, "I've got forty-seven trucks, yeah. and we've been having trouble just meeting, you know, averaging." $2.32.40, you know, off of the week. And you're telling me you're going to keep us above $3? Oh, that's a no brainer for us, man. You want to sign up all 47 of the trucks. Each one is $1,000 a month. Do y'all realize how many fleets that we're probably going to sign up? Think about that for a minute. Think about the fleet contracts that we'll probably get. Think about that. There's a lot of small fleets out there that have what? Five trucks, 10 trucks, 20 trucks, 40, 50 trucks. Do the figures on what one, one medium sized fleet will pay you. Anybody ever thought about that? <laughs> Because with flat fee dispatching, you uh, <laughs> we just made ourselves so much more affordable for fleets versus a dispatching a fleet at what percentage of the what load? The load. We just made we just made this so much more affordable for small fleets, did we not? Yes. Hey. Shoot me an email, Michael, um, at info at no cheap freight .com, and I'll, I'll I'll pull up your um your grasshopper password. But you don't have a grasshopper password. You got a grasshopper um uh, no you you don't need a grasshopper password. I need a grasshopper password. You, you I don't need to get into a um my my administrative account. You all just need to have your pin <laughs> or your grasshopper number. Okay? You all don't you all don't get a grasshopper password. You all you all get a pin off of the grasshopper number, but you don't need to get a password. I don't need y'all going in and changing numbers and stuff. <laughs> <coughs> um but yeah but think about how we just <laughs> made it super affordable for fleets. They have worry-free dispatching now. I, I realize you all are just kind of just looking at it from the standpoint of I sign up one carrier, one carrier, but <laughs> I promise you, I promise you, I've already, you know, kind of done the numbers on what different size fleets would bring this organization. And that, that phone call that I just talked about, that should have given y'all a heads up. The guy has 47 trucks. They've been struggling to keep their trucks above $2.40 per mile for the week. Struggling to find $2.40 just to keep them up at that. Is it normally they've been falling around 220, sometimes close to, close to, real close 
to that two dollars per mile on refrigerators. So imagine us with our strategy of contacting brokers and shippers, and we are allowing them to make more money. At the same time, they are sending us what? The freight that is priced above $3 per mile for our what? Refrigerator. Above $2 per mile for our what? Drive name. I mean, fat name. Above $2 a mile for our drive name. So we're able to satisfy our carriers across the board. Think about so that guy that has, those, that has those 47 trucks. When he signs up, <laughs> yeah. So does that depends on what state he's in? How does that work? Like when you get big, do that still go by the state? Well, if if his the, company, the brand in, if his company is in your state, yeah. He's gonna call up that brand. He's gonna go, you know, or or, or 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 whatever. Now, if you're asking me when he signs up, are we gonna send him to that to whatever state he's in? Probably yeah. Because corporate now, 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 now. Let's remember, a lot of the states that are out there right now that are still available are gonna be other corporate, right? Because right now, corporate is pretty much running, you know, close to about 20, what, about, about 28 or 29 states, almost 30 states. Right. <laughs> right? Now, if he's in one of the states that's already taken, yeah, that will go to that state. Don't ask me what state it is. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Well, I wasn't gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, you know, uh, <clears throat> making that forty-seven thousand dollars a month for that for that fleet. That's eleven thousand dollars a month uh, paycheck for yeah. some lucky branch. <laughs> hey Calvin, how um how is the profits distributed? Is that that's according to your investment, right? The percentage of your investment? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's how it's, it's distributed. If, if you're investing uh fifty percent, you know, the branch um fee, you get fifty percent of the revenue. You're getting 12.5% of that 25%, right? If you're, if okay. you've got yeah. 70%, if, if, if you're in a, let's say you're in a $10,000, um, you're in a 10K um, trademark, and you come up with 5,000, and two more people come up with 2,500, <laughs> you're going to get 50% of that 25%. They're each going to get what? 25% of that 25%. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That breaks down. <clears throat> if, you, okay. if you ever, I have one more question for you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever want to wanna opt out of a contract, how, how would that work? I'm pretty sure by the time that happens, you have plenty of people waiting in line that don't want that to <laughs> Okay. I mean, that's like, not, to, I, not to say I would want to hop out, but you know. I mean, look, that's how I get called now. <laughs> Somebody called me today, but we usually get about, oh, uh, four or five calls, you know, per week that people want to, you know, drop out the program. That's fine. But they seem surprised when they call and they say, uh, how do I cancel my subscription? Just send us an email. And if you want, you know, you want to cancel your subscription, one of the interns will get it. They will process it. They will remove you from the back office. You know, they'll cancel all your logins. And then no longer, we're no longer charge you a monthly fee. 
I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. So, you're not going to try to hold, I'm trying to hold you in something you don't want to be in. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and on top of that, we, we, we get about five to six titles a day. So for the one that wants to drop out, we probably going to have about 15 people that, that came in. Mm-hmm. Now, let's talk about more more with the Insurance USA ownership. Yeah. Kind and, of. And, and that's going to be that's the same, same way. I mean, look, oh, okay. look okay. we've got so many people who have, who have expressed not only interest in upgrading their their trademarks, <laughs> we've got people that, have, that are just sitting and waiting for their money to come in so that they can get a trademark, so they can get a brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> we got a lot of. Yeah. I mean, that's that's quite a few of you all who have sent me emails. Said, well, I can't do it right now, but in about a month I'm gonna be ready. In about three weeks I'm gonna be ready. In about a month and a half I'm gonna be ready. I mean, I'm putting some stuff in the place. So yeah, the opportunity is always gonna be there, and for any good opportunity, there's always gonna be people who are gonna be willing to take advantage of that opportunity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, All right. sir. Everybody, we're going to call that for the night. It's already, oh, 9.30. Uh, y'all better get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> y'all better get me in trouble. Uh, uh, I got to go home now. I can't play no more. <laughs> I done I I I let the sun go down. I done let the the street light come on and I ain't home for the street lights on, so I know what that means. <laughs> so um, I appreciate y'all. Um look to hear from me. Um and get look to check your emails because we're gonna be sending some stuff out over you know, the next next two days. And on Saturday I'm gonna be contacting all of the uh, branch owners and we're gonna be working out how to get how to um get your fees in so that we can go ahead and secure our branding and our uh, marketing budget and everything. And, uh, you know, hey, this, this next this next week is a big week. This is a big week. Um, Fourth of July, that's our launch date. It's a big week. Um, you know, the website is pretty much there. It's ready. All I got to do is add the sign-up page to it so people can go on and they can sign up, you know, sign the dispatch agreement, send it back over, and do the automated there. The, the, you all have your toll-free extensions. You all have the toll-free number, that's set up so when people call and they put in your extension, they'll go right to you. Um, we're going to have a, uh, I'm going to create a, um, um, a, 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 an Assurance USA branch page so they can go through and pull up all the branches that will have all of your extensions there to tell who you all are. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to create something where you all can create like a, almost like your own um, page for it. I want everybody to create their own social media branch page. Okay. Every branch they have a social media page. Not just a Facebook page, but I want you to have a LinkedIn page. I want you to have a YouTube channel. I want you to have a Twitter page. I want you to have a Snapchat and a what? Instagram page. Because uh, social media branding is going to play a huge role in our success. All right? And every page that we sign up, we'll, we're going to go into each one of those platforms and we're going to have you all to sign up with a whole bunch of trucking groups, owner operators, trucking groups, you know, anything that deals with trucking, you all are going to be signing up for it. And when you put stuff out there, it's going to be put, it's going to be shared in those groups. This is how we're going to generate leads. Okay, it's all about lead generation. Oh, that's what it's all about. All right, so we've got a lot to be done. This Sunday, I'm having a meeting with my corporate staff. I'm, I am going to be contacting them or tomorrow and setting up a meeting with them so we can go ahead and get our contracts uh, put together for our corporate staff and I can give them their directives so they'll have their jobs to do and they'll know what they need to do in um, helping them move the company forward. Thanks, everybody. See y'all on Saturday. I'll be contacting you all over the next two days. Look to get some stuff from you. Have a great night. Good night. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.